This is the Hungry Valley Recreation Area, more popularly known as Moon Rocks. It's located about 25 miles north of the Reno Sparks area off of Highway 445 and Winnemucca Ranch Road. It's a lunar landscape that is, by itself, an attraction worthy of a visit. But as remarkable as Moon Rocks is, there's another reason people love to come here. This is an off-roader's dream, and we're here to get a look at all the things you can do here, because we have a connection. It's my nephew, John. Hi guys, thanks for coming out here. Thanks no for having problem. us. John and his buddies, Matt and Pat, have been riding together for years, and they know how to have some fun out here at Moon Rocks. Moon Rocks is uh, actually designated as a recreational vehicle area. And anybody can come out here with their vehicles, recommended four-wheel drive, you know. <laughs> and then uh, you can go all the way up into these rocks. There's tons of trails everywhere. Uh, you can bring your bikes, your UTVs, your vehicles, bring your campers, come out and camp. This is a designated area for that. So what did you guys bring out today? So we have a Yamaha 1000 UTV today. We raced this particular UTV in the Vegas Torino. Vegas Torino race is a desert race that starts in Alamo, Nevada, and usually finishes in Dayton. We race around 500 miles and see who gets there first in your class. So we race against a bunch of UTVs. Can you just get any UTV and race it? No, you can't. You have to add a lot of safety gear to these vehicles and do some upgrades with the suspension. And uh, we did a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of work. Not many things left stock on there. You can see it's got bigger tires, bigger wheels, bigger shocks, safer harnesses, safer seats, safer roll cage. So this is not the typical vehicle that someone's just going to bring out and play with on a weekend. Not usually. Probably not, no. no. <laughs> a lot of time and money involved with that to get it to where you see. But you can buy a stock one and basically do the same thing as we do with that. Just uh, can't race it professionally, but you can still take one out and basically go anywhere that will go. You guys want to show us? Yeah, we'll take you for a ride. Let's get our gear. You see those tubes on the sides of our helmets? They pump air in so the pressure keeps out dust. John takes us out onto some of the many miles of road and trail in the Moon Rocks area. At first, he picks an area with lots of whoops to test me a bit with its roller coaster like ups and downs. and then heads us onto some faster sandy track where he opens up the UTV and gives me a sense of its speed. That's his favorite part of desert racing, the fast. Oh my god, that was so much fun. It was a blast. Oh. Those little hoopty things. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they were fun. I'm going to give you back your sunglasses. <laughs> now here's someone who builds custom desert racers and other off-road vehicles. Sam Cothran runs Samco Fabrication. Well, you get a little bit of everything. The rock crawlers have all these rocks, uh, a, lot of, a lot of technical terrain for the rock crawlers, and the sandy soil gives you uh, good terrain to ride motorcycles, and then it creates uh, whoops. And the whoops are great to test stuff like this truck. A lot of people really enjoy exploring um, and, and going to find new places. And with post-World War II in the 50s and 60s, uh, people loved to go off-roading. Then they, they went from exploring to all right, let's do this and let's try to race from point A to point B in the desert. And so the vehicles have evolved over this period of time to handle really rough terrain uh, and to go over it at a high rate of speed. And that's what uh, I really enjoy the vehicle's ability and the, the technical ability 
with and the craftsmanship that you see in a lot of these different vehicles that we, we see today, it's, it's pretty awesome. So how many hours worth of fabrication and work does this vehicle represent? If you took a production vehicle, stock vehicle, and built it into a race car, it's about 500 hours. So it'll range anywhere from 500 to 3,000 hours to build one from scratch. This is a truck that I think a lot of people could build in their garage with a lot of tenacity, a lot of hard work, and a lot of pinch and pennies. This truck, cost-wise, is probably similar to going and buying a new pickup truck down at the dealership. This is something that blue-collar, hard-working people can get them and their friends together and they can work hard and they can go out there and race uh, a class like 1450 just like anybody else. Today we're actually out here, we're uh, testing and tuning this truck, uh, we're tuning the shock absorbers and vehicle tuning is a really important part of developing an off-road car. Sam invites me to ride in the truck while he takes some test runs. I'm excited to get a taste of desert racing. Then we hit the woods. Yeah, we're testing the shock absorbers all right. This is unreal. For a minute I was tense, but then I let go and treated the ride like I do an airline flight where I trust the pilot because I don't know how to fly and I sure don't know how to drive like this. For those who want to get vertical when off-roading, Randy Slauson is your man. He's one of the best rock crawlers in the world. Randy's a fabricator too, and he brought one of his creations out to Moon Rocks. So the fact that you have it parked on the rock means that you meant to park it this way? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so clearly this is a different kind of vehicle from what we've seen. What do you call this kind of a rig? This is a Ultra 4, which is a form of racing that we're doing that's a mix of desert and rock crawling. We can crawl all over these boulders and get down on these go fast roads and go 100 miles an hour wow. all in the same vehicle. We've been developing these cars over the last 10 years or so. It's a mix of you know, suspension, design, geometry, tuning, horsepower, all the different things that we do with the car to make them handle going fast and creepy crawling through all this stuff. Why is this area a good one for rock crawling other than the fact that of course there are rocks everywhere, but what about this area makes that actually accessible? Well, it's close to town. The area is, you know, a designated OHV. There's lots of trails and good mix of go fast sand washes and dirt roads, as well as the rocks out here. So it's a pretty good spot for us to come out and test and tune and play with our machines. But I think it's real popular because it's so accessible. A huge portion of the state is BLM land and anything that's BLM is open for off-road travel. So that's the, the big draw for me. Off-road travel is one of the main reasons that I moved to Nevada. The important thing is just to stick to the trails that are already burned in. There's so many of them, it's not like you need to cut your own track. Randy's word carries a lot of weight. He's a superstar driver and a two-time winner of the ultimate off-road race, the King of the Hammers. The whole premise is it's a mix of desert racing and rock crawling, and it's an endurance race. You go out and run trails you know, up through these nasty, craggy canyons in Johnson Valley in Southern California. They're world-renowned as being very difficult canyons, rock trails. So the original one, I think, was 50 miles, and now we've done one that was 220 miles. I won that one in 2015, and it was like a seven and a half, eight hour day. You know, you're in the car, you drive as fast as you can through all these trails, and then come out, and your pit crew's waiting for you, and you splash some gas and change your tire or whatever you need to do, and then back out into the desert and just continuous driving as fast as you can go. It's pretty cool. Have you ever raced against anything that you built when you weren't driving it? Sure. Uh, Did you beat your own vehicles? Uh, well, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna demo it for us? Sure. Strap in. <laughs> getting a ride unlike anything I've ever experienced. This vehicle is specially designed for this kind of travel. It's different.
disconcerting but completely thrilling to be traveling up a rock face at this amazing angle. The crawler conquers the rocks and Randy shows me what else it can do as we head out into the open. It can fly. We've had a blast and made some new memories and new friends.